Okay, in this video, we are going to look at an old school circuit. Now, sometimes old school can help us solve problems today. So we're going to look at this device here. This is a tuning fork filter. Now, it's a mechanical filter. It's an audio bandpass filter. And the frequency ranges from 300 hertz to 5000 hertz. Now, this is a three-terminal device. We have an input, an output, and a ground. And this one is cut for 997.5 hertz, so that's its resonant frequency. So we could input a frequency range into this filter of 300 hertz to 5000 hertz, and any frequency that's on either side of the 997.5 hertz, there'll be attenuation. Now when the frequency comes up and hits the 997.5 hertz, uh, this tuning fork will resonate, and it will have very low attenuation, and it will, it will pass the 997.5 hertz signal. Okay, here's the equivalent circuit of the tuning fork filter. Now the tuning fork is made out of quartz, which is a piezo material, so it contains inductance, capacitance, and resistance. So this is the three terminal device, so here's our input, here's our output, and this is our ground. Now across the input and output we have two capacitors. That's the damping, that's the mechanical damping capacitors, which will give us our bandwidth. And the resistor is the mechanical loss. So we have left is our inductance and capacitance. So when we excite this crystal with a signal coming in, when we hit the resonant frequency, the inductant reactance and the capacitance reactants will cancel out. So this will be like zero uh, resistance. So all we'll have left is the, is the R, which is the mechanical loss. So at the frequency of resonance, we'll have the frequency come through, and the only attenuation for that frequency will be the mechanical loss R. Okay, here's my little test circuit from my tuning fork filter. And I'm using a 922.5 hertz tuning fork filter in this circuit. And here's my input. So this is my audio generator. So I'll feed a, I'll feed a variable audio frequency into the input. Now on the output, I'm taking the output signal and rectifying it and feeding it into a comparator. And when, a, and when the comparator gets triggered, this LED will come on. So I have a little audio generator hooked up and I can hook up a speaker so you can hear it. Now you won't be able to tell the difference between the very fine frequency changes, but I'll call it off. So right now I have 920 hertz fed into the circuit. And there's 920 hertz tone. It's 921, 922, 923, 924. So I'll go back. 924, 923, 922, 921 and 920. Okay, you can see the output of my frequency generator. It's 920 hertz. So I'll go up in 1 hertz increments. There's 921, 922, LED comes on. 923, 24, 25. You go back down. 24, 23, 22, LED comes on. 21, 20, so you can see it's a very sharp curve. It's a very high Q bandpass filter. Okay, so a good application for these tuning fork filters would be tone detection. And that's what they were used for. They were used in pagers for two-tone sequential decoding to trigger a pager. But now we have DTMF, which you're familiar with. You see that on your phone, the DTMF tones. And you can get DTMF decoders to decode each tone. Also wirelessly, you can see on, uh, on UHF and VHF radios, they have DTMF, so they send DTMF over the air. So why would we want to bother with mechanical filters? Well, the mechanical filters consume no power at all. There's no power supply input to the filter, so they don't consume any power. So with the battery-powered devices that we have and all the low-power microcontrollers, now we could use these in a circuit, and it won't take any power for very low-power tone control. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my tuning fork filter test circuit that I built on my breadboard. Now the heart of the circuit contains an op amp, a C3140, and it's, it's configured in comparator mode. And here's my tuning fork filter. So here's my input with my signal generator, so I'm feeding an audio signal generator into the tuning fork input through a 0.01 microfarad capacitor. Now when the tuning fork resonates at 922.5 Hz, we'll get a high amplitude signal out of the tuning fork filter, which will be rectified by these diodes, which will charge up this 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Now when the voltage on the capacitor on pin 3 
becomes higher than the voltage on pin 2, which is set by the potentiometer, this 100k pot, output will go high and turn on the LED. Now this resistor here is a bleed-off resistor, so it will slowly bleed off the 0.1 microfarad capacitor when the frequency uh, of the tuning fork uh, input goes below the resonant frequency, and then she'll shut off uh, the LED. So that's a very simple circuit for testing out these tuning fork uh, filters. Now if you want to generate a tone, a very precise tone, you can actually use these tuning fork filters in an amplifier circuit and put it in the feedback path. And that will, that will generate a tone at the frequency of the tuning fork filter, in this case 922.5 Hz. And you could use that oscillator to actually trigger this circuit. Okay, so now you know how these tuning fork filters work. And you can get them online. I've seen them on eBay. And there's other companies selling them. And the part number is EFM-G. And then the number after that is the actual frequency. They come in all different frequencies. So if you've ever taken apart any equipment and you see a device like this, you know what it is.